Hi, I'm Crafty Patty. I really enjoy dot painting. I find it very relaxing and meditative. I could have just painted a rock like these, but I really like to think a little bit out the side of the box. A bit of a pun there, as you will see, because I will be painting inside a box. <laughs> so this is what I came up with, a rock mosaic. This video is a bit faster than most of my videos. It is more to give you, you know, some ideas. If you want to start on a smaller project, then have a look at my playlist called Dot Painting Tutorials. I'll put a link in the description box below so you can have a look. Okay, let's paint some rocks. Here's some rocks I've been gathering and I've now painted the back sides, that's the flat side. And I'm using Artist Loft's Flow Acrylic Black Paint. So I'll just be flipping my rocks over now and I'll be painting the back sides. And then we'll let those all dry and then we can decorate them. I'm using these little tiny containers that I did get from the dollar store quite a while ago. And it's nice to have something that's got a little bit of depth to it. And of course, a lid so you can keep them from drying out. If you don't have something like this, you can use a palette as well. Again, it's got some deep wells and you can just lie a wet paper towel over top to prevent those from drying out if you want to continue to use them for several rocks. So now what I want to do is because these are going to go and sit in my garden outside on the front, I need to turn all my rocks over to the other side like so because I want to protect them. So I'll go outside and I will spray them with Krylon Camar varnish. Rocks are all dry on this side, so I'm just going to flip them back over so the flat part of the rock is on the bottom again. And then we're going to draw on our pattern. I have misplaced my watercolor pencil, so I'm coming in with the dressmaker pencil. Any pencil will do that you can see the lines. And I'm just going to come in and draw some guidelines of where I'm going to paint my dot art. So I'm going to just start down in here and there's no rhyme or reason of what I'm doing. I'm just drawing some fun lines to give me a guide. And here's some great little dotting tools. These are the ends of my foam brushes. And there's three sizes there and some more foam brushes. You can also use crochet hooks if you've got a nice flat bottom. And here's three sizes here that I can use. And for smaller dots, my favorite tool of choice is an embossing tool. It has a larger ball on one end and a smaller one on the other end. And the ends of paint brushes. And the end of a pencil works great. And another favorite of mine is using the glass ball sewing pins and I've just popped it in the end of a pencil. You can also use nails or a paper clip. Have a look around your house and I'm sure you're going to find lots of great tools that you can use for making dots. And all the paints I'm using for my dots are just cheap dollar store paints, Crafters Acrylic or Craftsmart, any brand will do. And I'm using it straight from the bottle. And if it does get a little tiny bit thick, then just add a little tiny drop of water just to thin it up a little bit. I'm now going to go around and paint all the lines I've drawn with some white. So I'm just going to put that in a container so it's easier for me to reach into the box here. And then I will go around and paint all my white dots. I'm going to be using my embossing tool to do all my outlining. And I'm going to leave the rocks right in the box here and paint 
all the lines inside the box so it stays in the same position that I've started. That's my first line. My second line is right here. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to start on the right. And what I'm doing is I'm walking the dots. So I'm going a large dot down to my small dots. Here's my large dot here. I'm going to carry it through up onto this rock here. And carry it on so the pattern continues. Again, starting back with a large dot coming back to a small dot. This rock continues on here with my line, so I'll continue my dots here. So I'm going to continue to do all my lines, and then we'll get back to you and we'll show you what we do next. All my white outlines are done, so I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll come back in with our colors and patterns. What my plan is is now is this is going to turn it into kind of an abstract landscape. So starting with some grasses, maybe some flowers, some water, mountains, sky. I have no plans. I'm just going to have fun with it. And um, we'll start down here with some greens and we'll work our way up. So I'm just going to start with some different shades of green and let's put in some blades of grass for these two sections here using my smaller tool. And changing up the color a bit just to give it some variation of the grasses. Going into a bit of a lime green. And I'm just going to follow along and fill this section in. Something to note, my paints have sat overnight and I did not stir them before I started working with them. So they've settled and this is what's happened is they're glomping and running all together. Uh, don't worry about that. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll go over top and just dot on the top and it'll be just fine. So do make sure you stir your paints and you won't have this happen. My next section is I'm going to add in some little wildflowers and I love purples and pinks. So that's what I'm going to do. What I've done is I've taken a dark purple and a pink and I've made six colors and with the white of course. So starting with my natural darkest purple, I then added a bit of my pink and some white for the next shade, some more white for the next shade. And then this is my natural pink. Then I added the pink and some white for the next shade and then white. So that gives me a nice range of colors in the same hues. I'm going to be using the end of one of my foam brushes to make the center of my flower. So I'm going to dip it into my lighter pink. And let's try for a flower right here. And we'll make some dots around our larger circle with my darker purple. So we'll start on the top, one on the bottom, and one on each side. And then one in the middle. I 
I use a bigger circle for my very center of my flower. Now I'm going to come in and make another smaller size. So I've just found something that's smaller than this one. And I'm going to go around and make more circles again around the flower. I'm going to come in with my natural pink and replacing those circles right in between each of those purple dots. And we'll go around. Now I'm going to outline with walking dots around each of those last dots. So I'm going to come in with my smaller dotting tool. We'll start with the dot at the top and we're going to walk it down. So starting at the top and walk it down. Another dot at the very top just to blend that in and then they walk it down. And we'll go around each of those dots in the same manner. And once you get to here, it'll blend with the other one, so that's fine. And the same dot, and around. And there we go, we've got a cute little flower. Now we can choose to do the same colored flowers across the way or we can change it up and add some different colored flowers. So I'm going to do a yellow flower in the middle here. So again with my same tool, we're going to do a white dot this time in the middle. And this time with the yellow and a very small dotting tool, I'm going to go around with very small dots all the way around. And with my next darkest yellow, I'm going to go around one more time. I'm going to go in between those last row of dots. So there's two different ways of making flowers and I'm going to carry on my flowers to the rest of my rocks in that row. And another one with an orange center and a blue flower. Just vary it up however you want. So now I've been coming in and filling in my background with green dots and so I'll just finish up this one and then that section will be finished. For my next section in here I'm going to come through with some like greens, yellows, and oranges, kind of like a meadowy kind of look. And I'm just going to do straight lines all the way across. I finished up my pastures and on my next section I'm going to come in and make some water patterns with different shades of blues. Finished my blue water and I'm going to come up into the next couple sections and we're going to add some mountains. So I've mixed up a darker, a medium and a lighter color. Of course in the foreground your mountains will always look darker and in the distance they will look lighter. So I'll have fun with that now.
going to look for my peaks of my mountains and I'm just going to come down from there and make a straight line down. And now I'll just fill it all in. And starting my second layer of next darkest brown, and this will go into my next section, and this will all be mountains. There's my next darkest color and my lightest color from my last part of the mountains will fill in again and make some more mountains in the background. And now for the sky, opposite to mountains that go dark to light, the sky and horizon will go from light to dark. I've mixed up some gray, white and the different shades of blue, so starting with the lightest blue and we'll work up to the darkest blue to the top. And these white lines will just basically act as some cloud formations. And when I get to the lines, I'll probably just put in a few more whites here and there to make them look like clouds. And I've added a few clouds, like I said, I was going to with a few more white dots. I'm into my third color of blue, lightest, next darkest, and next dark. And then the last one will be on top. I'm all done. I've painted all my dots and then I'll let this dry overnight and then tomorrow I will seal it with my Camar varnish and I'll put it up in the garden. <laughs> 